go charging in. He's going to have two people backing him up. Uh, I think that really plays to D2's strength, and ultimately, I think that's probably a weakness for Prodigy. Well, it's game number one. Enjoy it. We're already getting the action started. Winner's bracket finals time, and we are going to find out who is going to be heading to the grand finals as they await those in the lower bracket to complete their games. There's already been an opening frag. G2 artists taking down Hip. There's also a trade to be happening, but there's so much damage that's been done so far to the Prodigy squad, but you can also say the same to Wildest, who's down to just 4 HP here. Pith and Pat have come in, but at least Rhyme and Turco get two of their own, and now it's going to be a two versus two. Spike still hasn't gone down yet, though, and it's going to be Mixwell all the way over on a site still. So they yeah, are not sure why. one at the moment. Yeah, this is just a little bit of a late rotate, maybe because the spike on the gone down. Okay, maybe waiting on the uh, teleport, but now obviously the information is going to come over. He's going to get the audio cue of the spike going down. I think Ardis just needs to play his life here and wait for the backup to come. And here you go, Mixwell going to come through Hooker. He's going to find the first one. Ryan will fall. And actually, there you go, poor at super low HP and... Just in the nick of time, because there was a double peak going on to Ardis there. He's done really, really well to stay alive. Uh, absolutely leaves it open for Mixwell to come up, pick himself up two kills. It's almost like Prodigy just weren't quick enough to push Ardis there. They would have had the information that he was going to be weak, down to just 4 HP. Like you said, just the right amount of time from Ardis, he was able to bide his time and give Mixwell the ability to push behind, and that's always going to be the benefit of having a jet on the rotate as well. They can get there so much quicker with the dash being available. And welcome back to my face. There we go. Just a brief glimpse of the salmon shirts once again. That's lucky I didn't have my shirt off, I guess. I mean, do you take your shirts off mid-cast sometimes, High Fox? Are we I've learning been, something new about you? I've, I've been known to, yes. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. It's risky, but I very much respect it. Again, I'm learning so much more about you with each cast, and... I'm liking you more and more. Ardis gets the opener on to... Look at this, though. The aggression. And, it, yeah, this is just easy at the moment for G2. They are saying, we might be the defensive team, but we're going to make you feel like we're the attacking team with how we're playing. And again, this is that second round again. You know they're going to be weak. Absolutely making use of the, uh, I would say, scrappy buy. Obviously, some Spectres on the board. A Bulldog in the hands of Pat, as you can see. That there... Again, is, is that aggression I was talking about from G2? They're, they're absolutely not afraid to take the fight and be the uh, the ones to engage, even from a defensive side. And now we're actually going to see Mixwell and David P force up onto a double operator setup. One Phantom on Pith, a Bulldog for Pat and Ardis still. And again, you got to think now with Lucker finally getting an operator in his hands, Prodigy are going to try and make something work here. Prodigy on their first buy of the half. Are just going to spread themselves across the entirety of the map. We're not going to see as much aggression from G2 this time around. So a little bit more respect being given to their opposition of Prodigy. Aldrone isn't going to spot anything, but once the Aldrone's gone, maybe that's when we'll see the push through. Rhyme and the rest of the boys will march their way onto site. Wall goes up, plant easy and comfortable for Hip. Molotov not quite catching him. The shock dart did do a little bit of damage, but Rhyme takes down David P. And that's always a good way to start the round. David P being such an influence to this G2 squad with how aggressive he's been. You can see, been broken. I was gonna say you can see actually we've got a brimstone playing that that post plant incendiary, so they need to be quick about this. All Prodigy need to do is buy enough time. As soon as that second audio cue on the spike timer goes down, he knows he can send the Molotov out and deny any chance of the defuse here. Pete comes out from Rhyme. He's going to find Ardis. He's actually going to find it. Second coming out. Lamps, this is a fantastic hold here from Prodigy. Time's going to run out. Absolutely no chance of the defuse coming through. Mixwell goes all the way back to defense's spawn, and that is going to be Prodigy putting one round on the board. That is an interesting start, Dan. Yeah, a lot better from them now that they've got some rifles. Of course, G2 was still carrying over their SMGs from the previous. So now this is going to be the first big round. As I say that, there were a couple of players that had to buy up after round two, losing their lives with their aggressive nature. So it's just going to be the two rifles and an op, an SMG and a sheriff for Pith. They're not wanting to just give up the round for free here and instead are going to try and combat this with a somewhat weak by 
And I wonder how much of this is going to come down to Mixwell on the op. So we are going to see his point of view. He's not going to be able to peek out, unfortunately, because of the paint shells. If the paint shells weren't enough, the boom bot certainly is going to do some damage, but the dash away. But at least that dash has now been triggered and won't have that dash unless he gets a couple of kills now. But here's the thing, though. They know now the operator, being in hookah, is going to give them an opportunity to push on. They haven't got, they're not going to have any pressure from heaven. They just need to clear these close angles like dark and lamps and hopefully get themselves an entry onto A-site. Pora in that lurking role. David P only with a Spectre, so he's got his work cut out for him here. Actually, Pora's going to swing onto him. David P's going to miss the initial shots. But actually, Pith's going to convert on that. And that's going to be a weapon upgrade over at B-Long, but... We're going to see now the push coming through showers. Maybe we're going to see some more pressure over towards A. Prime walls himself up over the box. If he can get any vision, Pat gets the opener on to hip. And just like that, they follow suit. Oh, Turco oh, pulls. Oh. Rhyme gets one onto Ardis as well. Prodigy down to just two. Lucker's kind of stuck in showers at the moment with the op, but Pat has been able to find him. It's all going to be down to Rhyme, but there is Pat. 3k for him. G2 straight back on the board, and maybe it was just a blip. At one round, so even with the Sheriff, even with the SMG, they've still managed to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, a really good turnaround from G2, to be honest with you. There was a, at one point, it would have been a 2v4 over on the A site, but Pat doing absolutely what's necessary to slow the push. The incendiary going into shower and then just a cheeky little pick on, uh, on our boy Hip on the raise inside showers. And at that point, the push is stopped in its tracks. Prodigy might think about pushing through this smoke here. If they do, they're actually going to be uncontested at lamps. No one from G2 currently there. Default smoke's come out. The push onto the site comes through. Slow onto lamps just in case anyone was in residence, but there wasn't. There's the shock dart onto the plan, but it doesn't actually connect with hip. And now how are your post plants here, Prodigy? They were pretty good earlier. We've got the Brimstone again playing on short, arguably with the Molotov available. The Insin can come down a little bit later on if the rest of the team can buy enough time. Lucker gets one onto Pat. Mixwell's going to get aggressive through Lamps here. He's going to be the first point of contact to this player who's just to his close left. Doesn't quite do it though. Ryan gets a two-man spray down. Ardis wasn't able to get the trade out. David B wants to push onto site, but there's a Molotov in his way. Pith finds Hip. David tries to spray him through the wall. And Prodigy... Okay. Oh, really, really okay. impressive from them. Yeah, really, really good post plant setup there. Again, they had the brimstone in there, as you can see on the minimap. He was set up just down on shore, and we did actually see the incendiary sent out. And that was initially to stop any push coming across from default, actually, uh, after the contact on lamps. And that was actually a really impressive hold from Prodigy. I'm not going to lie. This is a. Uh, we could ask, have ourselves a map on our hands here, Dan. Well, I think this is why Prodigy have chosen Bind. They feel like it's their best chance of being able to take a map off G2. And certainly with the two rounds they have been able to win, they, they've shown that their post-plant positioning on Bind is excellent. Makes it very difficult for G2 to be able to retake these sites, especially with the, the lined-up Molotov off-site as well. And I wonder whether G2 will recognize that and maybe start sending someone through on the rotate oh, to catch oh no. him. Just like that, Ryan takes down David P. Again, G2 just getting a little bit aggressive. I know exactly and Mixwell, he was able to find his way all the way down B short, but has dashed back because he did get spotted out. The neural theft will give the information. Three members are going to be in hookah on this Prodigy side. They're being patient about this one. Still plenty of time to work with. They don't have to force anything just yet. They're going to wait for the rotate from the final member. Hip is going to be the first defender here to try and get maybe a spray down, but he gets oh, Turco. through the middle of the site. Turco gets the wall bank. And that's where the recon dart can be so, so effective. Prodigy again are going to have the man advantage, but Orbital Strike will at least slow them down here. There's the blade storm. Nope. Turco going to shut it down before it goes off. Pat's there for the trade, though. That's going to find two. That's a fantastic spray down and Ardis with the cleanup. And then you see the ping onto the last one. Only, I was going to say, 10 seconds left on the clock there. Ardis 
Unfortunately, losing out. Lucker getting away with just 21 HP. And again, comes right down to the final 10 seconds. But Prodigy just edging out around winning that one. Unfortunately, there, G2 couldn't really find a clean entry. Again, the trades were there. Pat came in to back up Mixwell after the Blade Storm was popped. But just too much damage on the way in meant that uh, Prodigy were able to hold them at arm's length. Shame, really, for Otis. He probably wanted to be able to just hide away in Cubby and try and play down the clock. Hunter's Fury gets popped very early here. Hasn't been able to connect with anyone. Turco tries to get the spray down through the smoke. Pour has found Pith oh, wow. elsewhere. Again, that's the aggression from G2. Down a B long. Arguably, you can understand it because the money isn't going to be great going into this round. David P's been able to connect with one with the ghost. So if that rotate has worked out and that flank is going to be good enough. The res will pick up Pith. And Mixwell. He's been able to find one of his own here. Picks up a Phantom as a reward, but Turco from behind will deny any sort of gun replacement for him. And David three, P. Three. I was going to say, David P and Pith going to come through on the, the flank here. Spy camp down in showers. And here you go. The pressure coming through to Lamps here. Pat's only got himself a Sheriff, and he's going to die to the Blast Pack regardless. So no gunfight required. And here you go. Rhyme actually going to find Pith on that flank, but... They've got to assume the second is in a similar spot. Oh, there you go. Actually, Rhyme's going to hold the smoke. Find himself the third on the round. That will be another round on the board for Prodigy. Yeah, that's good news for Prodigy as well. They, they were able to force out the Resurrect from G2 side. As now G2 are going to buy up. They're going to go for a double op on low armor here. Pat is going to have a full buy. David P will have a full buy as well. But Pith only on the half armor. Prodigy can win this one, then G2's economy very much in the gutter. So if Prodigy know that, I wonder how they approach this round, whether they go for something fast or they go continuously down this route of a little bit slower and waiting for G2 to make the move. I mean, when G2 have had so much success with their aggression down long, do you kind of do it sporadically and try and just catch them off guard every now and then, or do you try and consistently go for aggression? I mean, it's they're kind of they're playing one off the other. They either look for the information out of hookah or they're looking for these B long pushes. We've seen Mixwell go for it a couple of times, but this time around you can see he's over on the A site with Pat. So we've got a three man stack over towards B. And Spike is headed up short towards Hookah. So I mean, doing it every single round, they're obviously going to they're going to cop onto it. David's actually going to find two over a long hardest, going to pick up a collateral. Hip and Lucker will fall inside Hookah and Pora, the last man alive for Prodigy in this round. 44 seconds on the clock, so he's got some time to maybe just do some more damage to the economy of G2, but doesn't look like from this spot, Dan, he's going to be able to pick up the ace. Too risky, I think, to try and uh, give up the guns. And you can see this is the difference for G2. They have that secondary option of picking up the ops and holding angles instead. I mean, it's so difficult on buying to try and push onto sites when there are double ops holding. You can try and smoke them off to your best ability, but the amount of different angles you can hold on buying with an op makes that very difficult to try and predict who's going to be where. As G2 are going to tie this one up 4-4 now. And it was a round where they needed to win to keep their economy nice and healthy. They would have done wonders to their economy now, keeping five alive and those two ups nice and alive too. They may buy up and get their armor to full with a little bit of money that they've been able to carry over into the round. But for Prodigy, I think this is a decent start from them. I mean, it's been a lot of rhyme, 13 kills and five deaths. He's yeah. been really the big boy for Prodigy at the moment. You have to imagine if Pora can step up like he's done in previous rounds alongside Turco. And Prodigy definitely within a chance on this map. Definitely a slow start for two of them. Hip down on one kill as well from eight rounds is uh, a little bit disappointing considering what we've seen this guy do today. But this time around, we've got a bit of a weird push here. Three members of the defense over on A, and we've got four members 
of the attackers bringing the spikes through showers. Our drone gonna get sent out. Information gonna go across. Showstopper popped. And actually the orbital strike invested as well. And actually he's gonna come up. He's gonna find Ardis there, but he's there for the trade. Actually he's gonna get a second, but he will eventually fall. Spike should go down here, but it's actually over by Bench and David is gonna get a really important kill. That's gonna stop Lucker from falling back and retrieving that spike. But now it comes down to a 2v2 situation. Pat's already out of pipes. And Poor is looking to get aggressive on this. Double Sky Smoke coming down. Going to give Pat something to work around to maybe find an angle. Poor not expecting it at all. He's going to find that one. Well, they know where David P was. David P has gone for the fattest flank <laughs> I've ever seen. Went all the way from A Heaven now to try and get to B short. He will have to shoot a trap, so that information will at least be relayed. The one remaining player, Rhyme on site, still hasn't picked up this spike. Only 11 seconds left to work with, so needs to get a move on. Does manage to pick up the spike, will get the plant, but now he is just going to be pincered here. Insin will go down, and David P with the big flank. <laughs> it pays off in the end. 5-4 in favor of G2. And so much of that round was won by David P and how he approached things. Yeah, and again... I like that. A really, really quick rotation, just in case there was any chance the spike managed to escape. Again, in that situation, uh, I think when Ardis fell, it's maybe difficult for them to keep track of whether or not the spike was still down by bench. But uh, you're absolutely right. That long flank from David definitely paying off, and a bit of body shooting BM just to end the round. I think G2 do have that. They've got a little bit of character to them, haven't they? Yes, yes. And I'm okay with that. Like, I know that some people say, like, there's toxicity and whatnot, but I think that the one thing that drives all esports is rivalries and people with personality, people with character. And G2 are one of the first teams I've seen that, certainly in the European scene, and who are more than happy to speak out and question those who predict against them. I mean, artists tweeted out calling people clowns for saying they were going to lose to Fabric on Friday. And I love it. I love something to be able to kind of put behind, put some faces behind the screens because we're not able to see people at lands anymore. It's just online tournaments. So I'm all for a little bit of banter and a little bit of teabagging if that comes out as well. But now things slow down for Prodigy. It's a four versus four. We've had two early picks in this round. Tracking Dart is going to be removed by Pora. The Cypher battle on B-Site has been ever-present. As Mixwell just holding firm with his angle on short. As I say that, he decides to relocate. And maybe rightly so, because the rest of the squad of Prodigy are heading towards B. Uh-oh. Poor Lucker. Walks... Sorry, sorry, poor Ardis walks straight into Lucker. As I say that, David P gets aggressive onto poor up. This, uh, this has baited the rotation out here. As soon as Ardis fell, you can see now it's just going to be David P holding the fort. And that's he's going to jump up in. Oh my word, he finds Turco and Hip. That is a huge two-piece to pick up there. Because you could see the rotation always came out. The G2 players were going over to try and deal with Lucker. And Mixwell will find the headshot. Really, really good stuff from G2. They make it 6-4 here. And if G2 can get 8, then I might be a little bit concerned for Prodigy. However, when we did see G2 on Bind on Friday, their attacking side was a little bit lacklustre. But after watching what they did on Split and the sheer aggression they had, it makes me think that maybe they're going to approach things slightly differently. Where is this? Going for Patient. Where is this? Well, no one's ever going to know where that is. <laughs> I feel like I've been baited here. Four members of Prodigy are waiting in middle for maybe the smoke Ooh, to go. Pat. We have seen a lot of the multiple spray downs through smoke throughout the tournament. It does do a little bit of damage with the Incin as well. Of course, economy not great for Prodigy now. They are probably going to be sacrificing this and they'll be going down 7-4 unless someone clutches up and does something special. Mixwell has got the vantage point with the Operator. Even though the Boombot keeps seeing him, the Boombot's not going to do any damage to him. Prodigy just waiting for this one, Hypot. Oh, Pat. 
Look at that. The orbital strike going to pick up Fora and Hip on short. And now Lucka just being spammed away in the showers. G2 showing how effectively to use the ultimate there. Just zoning offshore. Again, you know, the incendiary did a lot of damage to Pora. I'm not sure why he walked through it, but again, just a textbook hold there. Eco round. So would have expected Prodigy to maybe just say, you know, let's go balls to the wall here, try and get something done. But the slow push being punished by the ultimates. Prodigy going to get one last chance to try and rescue something. Potentially a fifth round for them as they're going to have money now to buy up. I don't think they'd be too disappointed with a 7-5. Certainly in your normal game of matchmaking, five rounds attacking on bind, I think the majority of people would take that, but this is no normal game. This is highly competitive and a very difficult task for them against arguably the best team in Europe right now of G2. Hunter's Fury will come out. Has it actually done any damage? Doesn't look like it's going to tag anyone. It's a couple of whiffs, and we've seen that a couple of times already in this game. The Hunter's Fury not finding anything. Hit will tag down. Pat, but unfortunately doesn't oh, win the battle. Mixwell. And that's two for Mixwell. Not quite the third. Turco at least responds, but maybe the damage already done. It's just one player remaining. And it's going to be Lucker. Does win the fight to make it a one versus two, but he's already so, so low. There you go, yeah. Try and duke out, but it's... It's not going to be successful, surely. David P's here, and he's waiting. Oh, the recon's going to go spawn. Oh, oh my. my word, David. Oh, you can't lose those. Lucker on a lick of HP. And I thought he'd baited that perfectly there. 19 HP. The recon gets sent all the way into the spawn entrance. And David, a rare whiff. Does have some shock darts to work with, but no ultimate to... Peel off the site. Does get the that. spray down as well. What a round from Lucker. Lucka. And a one versus four. Gets the 4k and a round that never, ever should have gone in favor of Prodigy. Delete the VOD. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Delete the VOD. David is not going to be happy at all about that one. This guy has been so consistent. That is a rare, rare miss for him. But wow, what a round from Lucker. That... Again, Prodigy had absolutely no business winning that round. Scream maybe rubbing his hands together elsewhere, saying, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, good. Fail, David. 7-4, 7, four, that's seven five, though, and G2 now. We're going to see what they have to offer attacking. I want to see something a little bit different than what we saw against Fabrican. They didn't really have executes down to a T. They were too easily pushed off site. But I feel like if G2 can get into after plants, then they're going to be fine. It's just getting the spike down, which was their real issue. But Mixwell dashing onto site here, getting the info. <laughs> no one's going to be at the back. There is going to be a player in elbow. Two players in elbow and one on the defender door. And well, there you go. Spike down. All five players still alive on both sides. And then we've got the post plant for G2. Or whether when wonder whether they will be able to... Be true to what I said in that their post plant should be successful. Mixwell provides a little bit of cover. Turco gets a second, but Mixwell is there to clean up. And it's a trade for trade with Rhyme taking down David P, but here comes Artis to clean up as well. And now it's a two versus two. Mixwell gets one onto Lucker. He looks for the second over back site. Needs help from his teammate here so he can just hide. He can wait. Sees the grenade. And now he can wait for his teammate to push into, into, into Hookah. As soon as the information's been gathered, he can push out. Nice there we round. Go. Nice stuff from Mixwell. And a nice round indeed from G2. And again, though, it's just look at the aggression. As soon as the post plant comes down, they get a little bit of cover on elbow. And they actually opt to swing that as three people. Mixwell eventually coming out, but it's a two for three trade. Uh, just incredible stuff. And I, it, we don't see many other teams... Making plays like that, Dan, it's it, it's it's so nice to see. They, they absolutely take control of the situation. They clear out elbow. At that point, comes down to another scrappy 1v1, but Ardis gets that pick outside Hooker, and at that point, you know, it's round over. Well, look at the sheer aggression here from Prodigy, trying to catch them off guard, but Mixwell says, well, I'm not going to be caught off guard here. Gets the 4K. Could be the ace for him as well. Whiffs the first one. Goes for the knife. 
That is there to clean up, but so nearly mixed while dashing in for the knife kill for the ace. But G2 making that such a quick round. I mean, fair enough for Prodigy just trying to do something a little bit different with their eco. Just unfortunate they predicted wrong that Mixwell, the one waiting, and he had a phantom. Yeah, not not usually the uh, the blade we see Mixwell embrace, but I respect it nonetheless. That's uh, that's definitely got to be a good demonstration of the confidence levels coming out right now. Now Prodigy are going to have the money to buy up, but it's again going to be a quick push onto the site. Mixwell has the ult available to him. Knows there's a player close, doesn't want to waste the knife, so he gets the guns out, but by doing that, he has sacrificed half his health. Maybe he could have just used a knife or two to take down the boom bot, but maybe these knives will be more apparent later on in the round. Pat gets one with the bulldog onto Luckup. Mixwell just can't get out of lamps right now. Blast back <laughs> taken down. Always a bad way to go. Four versus four. Prodigy at least have the weapon advantage. Hip gets one sprayed down through onto David P. Four is in prime position to try and take down these players on short. Just someone's got to think about the defuse. Fifth in the showers and he comes out of the showers. He's lurking. Nice. He gets, two, gets the one off the defuse. Looks to get the second, but it's not going to work out. Prodigy will manages to get this one just. And Prodigy make it six. That was uh, a lot better from them. A lot better of a hole. But again, there was just a couple of bad weapons for G2 on that round. I mean, it, it's unfortunate that Mixwell gets shut down in that way. Uh, trying to push through lamps again. You know, the worst player you want to come up against when you're trying to push out of uh, behind the truck from lamps is is a raise. And Hip just using his utility perfectly there. Like we said, the boom bot goes in, brings Mixwell down to about 75 HP. He has to come back and get the heal from David P. He goes to take another stab. The paint shell goes in, then the blast packs, and at that point, you know, he's fallen and got no value off that. Oh, we're actually going to see a wall come out of Hooker here, and there you go. The aggression, a two-for-two two trade outside here. Pat will pick up two before falling. Now Rhyme going to come back and play underneath window, but the spike still outside Hooker, and actually, yeah, Rhyme going to meet David P. And David P going to come out on top of the 1v1 this time. Again, David P more than happy to push onto a site on his own. Had no support from the team. And he catches Lucker rotating through elbow. So now they're going to have a three versus one here. Just going to be hit. And he's going to run straight, unfortunately, into Pith. <laughs> and 6 to G2. And Prodigy trying to give G2 a little bit of their own, a taste of their own medicine there by getting aggressive out of Hooker at the double peak. But because it was a double trade, it didn't really have the success maybe that they would have liked. You now three rounds away from taking this first map. Yeah, he's he's starting to take the pith, really. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Very Ooh. clever. This is, see? Continue. Always hype up catching me off guard and uh, bringing out the big guns. I mean, I was thinking it. I just wasn't confident enough to say it. Wow, that's going to be many a man down B-Long, but they walk straight into pith and David's phantoms. This is going to be yet another comfortable round for G2 to make it 11. There is one more player there, but the spray down comes down from David again. Um, you've already got an ult. Don't know why you're picking up the ult there. <laughs> I guess why not? Take it off the board. There's absolutely no possibility of Prodigy getting an ultimate ult orb out of the, uh, out of the round. So Prodigy are going to need to string together many a round in a row here if they're going to get back into this game. They need to start holding more successfully. At least they've got money to work with, but plenty of a bank balance for G2. So even if they were to lose this round, they can still comfortably buy up the next and probably even the one after. Will we see the same amount of aggression down long? Probably not now that there are rifles for Prodigy to work with. I imagine they're going to be somewhat more passive at this point. Aldrone comes out from G2. Pora does find the opener onto David P. And see, that's the downside of David P's aggression because now they've lost the Sage, they've lost the Res, they've lost the healing ability. Pora also got a second. Mixwell has to do something special, but that is not going to be it. Rhyme quite comfortably gets the Sprite. 
And now just two members remaining of G2. And those two members, though, have been able to pick up two frags, but unfortunately, Pora is still lurking around long. And Ardis now in a one versus three. And Pora shows us why maybe we should still respect Prodigy's chances in this game here, Hypoc. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 11 rounds on the board for G2. It looks like they're... Uh... They're flexing their muscles a little bit, but Prodigy definitely, they're not done just yet. They've got a bit more in the tank. I mean, I don't think they want to go down without a fight here. Again, it's, it's a massive confidence boost. The first round of a series is always a, yeah, I mean, it can be a tilter. It can be a, a big motivational point if you get absolutely stomped out. Well, G2 still fancying this B push. Aldrone got sent down long this time, and if he got a tag, the Hunter's Fury might be able to do something. Does at least connect with one, but can't get a kill with it. Just a little bit of damage done, but Pith cleans up for it. And once you've cleaned up Pora, that means the site surely is there for the taking. He's been the main culprit of holding this B site. Orbital strikes here, there, and everywhere right now, but no one going to die to them. It's just more of a zoning control and getting people off the plant. Spike will now go down, but look at just this cluster of members of Prodigy on the defender's side and towards elbow. Ryan, did he see that one player? No, David P pushes through the smoke, gets the kill onto Turco. Oh, they wrap each other. just like that, he's on the other side. David P gets a 3k off screen. Ryan eventually takes him down, but David P, the damage is done. Three versus one, and it looks like this is going to be a 12th round for G2. Can you even save at this point? That's the real question. You're kind of stuck in elbow. Mixwell is coming from the defender spawn as well. They push out, they get aggressive, they deny the save. 12-7 to G2, one away from taking this first map. And G2 is just looking so much, so much better. I think that was intentional. Drop that recon dart just to peek him. Yeah, bait out a little uh, a little shot to either destroy it or he gets pinged on the location anyway, so... It's, Sorry, uh, I should have phrased that as an iron an iron question like we were doing yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that, I maybe would have uh, approached it a bit more delicately, I guess, if you'd have <laughs> phrased it that way. You f***ing idiot. <laughs> <Shut your mouth>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now Prodigy's money isn't going to be great, but of course they are going to force up. As it will be their last round in this map if they lose it. G2, they started heading towards A, but as soon as they see the Sage over there, they say, okay, well, you know what, let's go B. Lack of slowing ability. Maybe even they even had a little smell of the Cypher traps. They are just going to burst onto this B site. Mixwell does go through, but gets taken down by Pura. Pat gets the trade onto Turco after he got two of his own. Showstopper comes through <laughs> from hip, takes down Pat, and he's done his job. Now Prodigy, they're going to have the player advantage here. The spike hasn't gone down yet either. They've got control of it, and both are, of the David. players are off-site. I was say, David may be going to be able to get something done if he can get a peek out there, but there's an operator holding long here. Pith. Not long for this world. And Lucker will put Pith on his back. And G2 seem to have failed when they do second guess themselves. When they're sending themselves towards one site, but then quickly dash towards another. It was unlucky from Mixwell, really. I like the idea of dashing through just to break any sort of traps from Cypher. That's one of the, the best updates they made to Jet, in my opinion, the ability for her to break those traps, the amount of frustration I had trying to get onto a site before. When you dash, then you just suddenly get sucked back into the traps. Three members are going to push oh, out. No. But they're going to walk straight into Mixor, who gets two. But Turco again with some huge, huge kills. But David P is there to rescue the day and pick Mixwell straight back up. He'll still have the ultimate available. And now they can start to get more aggressive towards B site. They're going to have four members still up. Prodigy down to just three, and one of those being very weak. They do have Hunter's Fury and Orbital Strike available to them, though. So that means they can deny the plant, so G2 need to think about moving this quickly. Turco's got to be careful, though. He's playing that glass position. 
He's very, very low HP. Gonna see a shoulder peak from Hip there. Cloudburst gonna come down. Hip actually gonna land a headshot onto Ardis. That's gonna stop this hookah push in his track. Turco playing very, very slowly here. He doesn't want to peek out. Obviously, super low HP. And the Sage is down. Pith gonna find Hip now. So Turco gotta hold the fort for the time being. Mixpo actually has rotated with Spike all the way through towards a link and he has got david p for backup here you can see lucker all the way over in the defensive spawn he's got a sight line onto pipes right here and there you go he's actually going to drop down the marker onto default and that's going to be a setup for the hunter's fury and there it is that's going to deny the initial plant but david p going to pop it back down he can afford to eat one because he's got his heel up spike will go down the wall is still up and here we go it's going to be a 2v3 retake for Prodigy. Let's see if they can pull this off and keep this map going. Yeah, G2 doing well there, recognizing the Hunter's Fury was around, so they planted with just enough time, even if it had killed someone. Aldrone comes through, gets the tag. Turco opts not to go for the spray down. Because oh. of that, Fifth has been able to get the kill. Mixwell gets the last, and G2 went 13-8 on Bind in what was Prodigy's map.